Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Root Beer Lamb Ribs. That's right, we're only seven seconds into this video and some of you are already upset because some of you are thinking, I can't get lamb ribs. Well, first of all, yes you can. If people eat lamb anywhere near you, you can find lamb ribs. Every lamb has them. But even if you can't, this is going to work with any rib, baby back, spare ribs, beef ribs, you name it. But like I said, I'm going to use lamb ribs and here they are. I have two racks. Kind of similar thickness to a baby back. And the first phase of this recipe is to let this sit overnight, soaking in a sesame and root beer marinade. But the procedure is going to be a little bit different than just dumping everything in a bag like we usually do. We're going to actually apply the sesame mixture first and then introduce the root beer. So into a small bowl, I'm going to pour some toasted sesame oil. And then we're going to add a whole bunch of sriracha or any kind of chili paste or chili sauce and a good amount of salt. And I'm gonna take my pastry brush, I'm gonna mix that up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna brush that on both sides of our ribs. And I'm just doing this on foil so I don't mess up my cutting board or pan. This is actually gonna go in a bag next. So we're gonna apply that mixture liberally to the meat. And my theory here is that sesame oil will adhere to the fat in the ribs much better if we apply it like this and then pour the liquid in versus just mixing everything together. And like most of my theories, I can't prove it, but I think this is better. And speaking of theories, you'll have to check the blog post to find out why I didn't poke or peel the membrane. All right, so check that out later. And once all that's brushed down, we're going to go ahead and transfer that into a sealable plastic bag. Heavy duty, please. And once we have it in there, we're going to pour in a bottle of root beer. Now, of course, any brand's going to work, and I don't know anything about this particular brand, but I always choose based on which label looks like the kind they'd use back in the olden times. So I went with this one. We're going to dump that in. And at that point, we're going to seal up the bag and place that in the refrigerator for 12 to 24 hours. All right, so basically overnight. And that's going to allow that root beer and sesame flavors to permeate the meat. And as some of you may have already realized, this is based on a recipe we did a couple years ago for braised lamb that we did in sesame and root beer. For extra credit, can you tell me which celebrity chef I stole the idea from? So this is a flavor combination that has a proven track record of being awesome. Okay, so we're going to leave that overnight in the fridge. The next day, we're ready to cook. I'm going to place a large piece of heavy-duty foil on a sheet pan. We're going to remove our ribs from the bag, place them meat side up. I'm going to season both sides with salt and pepper. And then we're going to place a piece of foil on top. But before I do, I'm going to put a piece of parchment paper on top of the meat. And this is basically an homage to an old chef I used to work for that always put parchment on top of the meat before he wrapped it. He said it kept it moister. And while there's no scientific proof for that, I still do it once in a while. I'm going to put another piece of foil on top of that. And then we're going to bring up the four sides like that. So we have it nicely encased. And at that point, we're going to place that in a preheated 250 degree oven for about two to two and a half hours or until it's almost getting fork tender. All right, so we're going to put that in the oven. We're going to set our timer. In the meantime, we might as well pour our marinade that you did not discard into a saucepan. I'm going to add some garlic cloves some green onions, and a splash of rice vinegar. And we're going to bring that up to a simmer on medium-high heat. And I'm going to have you boil that for about five minutes or so until it reduces by about half, and then just turn it off and reserve it. And that's what we'll use to glaze the ribs later. All right, so just set that aside. By this time, the ribs have been in about two and a half hours. I'm going to pull them out. And like I said, we're looking for almost fork tender. And what we're going to test with is a fork. And the fork will go into the meat, but it takes a little bit of effort. All right, so I thought that was just right. Fork goes in, but not too easily. At that point, we're going to remove the ribs to a freshly lined sheet pan. We're going to take all those reserved juices, pour it into our saucepan where we have our glaze, and we'll put the heat back on that and reduce it down till it slightly thickens. And this would be the point to customize your glaze. I added a spoon of sambal, but you're always the boss man of your saucepan. So you put in anything you want. But like I said, bring that back up to a simmer and reduce it till it slightly thickens. And at this point, we're ready for final production. So we're going to take our brush, and we're going to brush both sides of the ribs. And while you're doing this, I want you to turn your oven up to 400 degrees. So while we cook these low and slow to begin with, now we're going to glaze on high heat. So we're going to paint on our glaze. We're going to pop those in a 400 degree oven for about six or seven minutes. We're going to remove it. We're going to paint on some more of the glaze, both sides, of course. We're going to put it back in five or six minutes, pull it out, and repeat that process until it's fork tender and looks just positively fantastic. So I probably did that four times, maybe 20, 25 minutes of additional cooking time at 400. And with each glazing, it just gets shinier and darker and more awesome looking. And of course, you're testing with a fork along the way to determine when it's perfectly tender. So at this point, mine was tender. I'm gonna do one last glaze. And then for appearances, if you want, on whatever you determine to be your last glazing, go ahead and sprinkle some sesame seeds on. 
It's going to reinforce that this is a sesame root beer glaze, and it also looks super cool. Oops, I kicked the tripod if you're playing the drinking game. So I threw that in for five more minutes, and when it came out, it was so gorgeous, I could barely stand myself. Look at that. Root beer and sesame glazed lamb ribs. That is a sight. All right, so I'm going to cut off a hunk of those. I'm going to place that next to a white bean salad, and then I have to take a taste of this. And you'll have to pardon the fork and knife. I was attempting not to mess up my camera. And while that was unbelievably succulent and delicious, it felt kind of weird. But don't worry, I came to my senses, as you'll see. But regardless of how you get this in your mouth, you're in for a huge treat. That sweetness from the root beer, the nuttiness from the toasted sesame, and the spice from the chilies combined to produce an incredibly tasty rib. So good. And a quick heads up, if you do use lamb ribs, they got a little bit of a funky bone structure at the bottom here, so don't be surprised if you're going to have to find your way with the knife. But like cutting all ribs, just find your way between the bones and you'll be fine. But part of it does have this weird angled bone at the bottom. But as you see, I made it through... And we're going to eat one more, like I said, properly with your fingers. And you can see right there the perfect doneness. The meat is not overcooked and falling off the bone with no effort, but if you bite it or pull it, it comes off clean. To me, that's perfect. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find a finger bowl. All right. So like I said, whether you use this for lamb, pork, beef, or whatever, root beer and sesame makes a spectacular glaze and marinade for ribs. So I really hope you give that a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy!